Hey everyone, this is George Karos, and this is the final recording of the Innovators Mindset podcast for the 2022 year. Now, you'll see a, a few more episodes um, actually popping up. There are compilation ones that will you know, have some highlights and things like that, but um, I, I typically like to get those compilation videos at the end of the year, just you know, kind of a look back and, and sharing that too. And and to be honest with you, one of the reasons I do that is because people are super busy at this time of year and they don't always have um, time to listen to podcasts or things like that. And I always want to honor my guests and I, I don't want to put my guests in a situation where um, people are too busy to listen to them because I think that every single guest I have, no matter what they do, what their role is in education, outside of education, they have something of value to share. And I want to give them that opportunity to share. So um, it's a great way to stay connected and to, you know, still learn from people through the past, but to make sure that um, the people that I am sharing that might be new to you or might be people that you're familiar with, they get as big an audience as possible. And that, that to me is really important as to how do I use this space to elevate others and, you know, share my own learning as well. And so you're going to notice there's no music, there's no... Uh, mindset Monday, nothing like this. I want to keep this as simple as possible. And I did say mindset Monday, so I have to say the. <laughs> okay, so there's going to be just that one um, as well. So other than that, no music. Um, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to um, share some reflections from the year and kind of what stuck out to me. What are some things that, you know, push my thinking? And I wrote some notes down. I wanted to kind of, I, I thought about like, what are, you know, can I summarize this into four things? And some of these things are really optimistic and some of them might seem a little bit negative, to be honest with you, as I'm going through this, but I think it's learning. And I think a lot of times when we learn, um, it's not that negative things don't happen, but how do we learn from those negatives to um, actually move forward and to continuously grow and get better? And how do I share my learning in a way that will help uh, people that are listening to this podcast. So before um, many of you listen to this podcast uh, and never subscribe, you know, never comment. And I would love, first of all, for you to subscribe. That'd be wonderful. Um, but also, if you're on YouTube and watching this, share like one thing you learned this year. I would love to like learn from you. And I, I've always like, I don't do this well enough to, you know, get people to engage in the comments but every time someone comments i i see it on my email i see it in the comment space and i, I learn a ton and i want this to be a, a back and forth conversation where we can grow together as a community and that to me is really important so if you just have one learning one thing that really stuck with you this year i would love for you to share in the comments and it's not just that i can learn but other people that look in those comments will learn from you as well so i, I encourage you to do that and so what are the the, the four things that I wanted to share. And if you've been following the podcast and listening to me this year, massive change in my life. Um, you can see at the beginning of the year, we had a, a you know, brick background behind me and that was in a, a house that I used to live in. And that space was actually particularly built to do video stuff. And it's interesting because uh, it was built way before COVID, but really came in handy. I didn't really utilize it as much as I, uh, should have before COVID and then all of a sudden, you know, so the space that that office was built specifically for, you know, video virtual stuff and came in really handy. So I don't want to say I could maybe jinxed everything, but yeah, that's kind of how it turned out. And so you notice that there's some things behind me that are similar, um, but there is a little different things because, you know, myself and my family, we moved this last year, we moved uh, all the way from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, um to just outside orlando florida and it, it's been a wonderful move and one of the things that has been really beneficial is not too many people i know stop by in edmonton alberta canada and uh lots of people i know tend to be in orlando for whatever reason whether it's a conference whether they're going to disney so i've actually been able to see people that i haven't seen for years and you know spend really good time with them and uh, one of the things that's really nice is I would get visits from friends, you know, when I lived in Edmonton, people lived in the area, but um, now when people visit, they they stay for a little while and you get to know people in a, in a, a different manner when you're spending days with them uh, at a time. And some of that's good, some of that's bad, but 
uh, it is what it is, but you do get to know people in, in different ways. Right. And so, um, one of the reasons I am taking a break is my mom is coming out here to spend a little time and, uh, you know, it, it's really nice. She hasn't met, um, our son Marino yet. And so I know she's really excited about that, uh, as a, an immigrant, um, from Greece to Canada, I know she's really looking forward to the warm weather here. And I'm, I'm excited about that. And so this change has brought a lot of feelings, um, to me over the past year or so there is definitely an apprehension to move away from something that was good that like there was I, I like we can always complain I, I don't want to say no complaints there's complaints definitely but um yeah it was, it was good like it was good and I, I talked about this when we actually moved um I did a podcast that was you know recorded before we moved and uh was published basically when I was making the drive from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada to, to, to Orlando, Florida, which is about a four and a half day drive. And I talked about that idea of, you know, risk. And I've shared this many times that risk is moving from a comfortable average in pursuit of an unknown better. And throughout the year, you know, that I was, I was, like I said, I was good. And that's what I talked about in that podcast. And as I get more and more comfortable here and comfortable with some of the discomfort, which, you know, is kind of a weird thing to say is because I am finding new routines. I am kind of putting myself out there, trying things that I wasn't necessarily trying. And I think that move, you know, having a fresh start, it helps me really think, how do I redefine myself? How do I, you know, recreate and take advantage of some things that I wasn't taking advantage of before because this fresh start is, is a good opportunity and as i was thinking about this move there's there's like you kind of just think sometimes you're like moving to a different place and it's just gonna be wonderful but it, it hasn't been wonderful in some circumstances it's been tough in some ways just i'm such a person who's driven by routine and um when routine one of my routine is thrown off i'm thrown off and so there is an adjustment period but i'm starting to you know find my groove and uh, i've shared this video before there was a video years ago I think it was a Chick-fil-A commercial and it was like this guy standing in a hole and he's like, he was saying about how he, someone came up to him and walked up to him and said like, what are you doing? He's like, Oh, you know, I, I found my groove. And it's like, well, it kind of looks like you're, you're stuck in a rut. And, uh, it's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm actually in my, in my groove. And it's like, it, you can kind of get mixed up with that. Like, you know, kind of the, the difference of, when you're in a groove and when you're in a rut and you, you sometimes you don't even really notice. And so I'm finding like new opportunities. I'm spending, to be honest with you, as much time as I was speaking, but way less time traveling, which is beautiful. It's opening up some doors for me to explore some different opportunities and, and try some different things, which is absolutely wonderful. And I really do. Um, I, I really do appreciate that and, and how wonderful um, that can be. And so as I'm getting, more and more used to this i'm finding new routines I'm, I'm finding new opportunities uh you can see the orlando magic stuff behind me i'm a huge basketball fan and uh yeah it's been wonderful to go to basketball games it's been like a childhood dream and i think the big lesson here my my number one learning that i wrote down was is that it's always better to initiate change before change being done to you and so uh that change happened prior to me like kind of getting to a point where I, I felt miserable or I wasn't happy where I was right like like I said we were good and it, it's been beautiful to watch I, I've watched uh, my oldest daughter who's you know six years old who is like the most aware um of you know of my kids is the most aware that we like moved uh you know to a different country my my daughter Georgia's too she doesn't really know what's going on but she's she's good and she's starting Georgia's starting to see this as as home and um we're we take these walks um every now and then he and i tend to wake up earlier uh, than everyone else in the house and um, sometimes I, i've been walking my dogs every day and that's that's been wonderful and sometimes i'll she'll be up and i'm like hey come for a walk and she's she's excited to go and I, and I always ask her i'm like is there anything that you miss and she just said no nothing and i said what about your friends like well like I do miss my friends, but I get to see them in a totally different way and they get to spend more time with them. And she's probably spent more time with her friends from back home than when she was at home because they come here and they hang out, they go to Disney and it's just kind of a, 
a neat thing to see. And I learn a lot from Kalia because she just jumps in. She just jumps in and immerses herself. And she's not really beholden to old habits and old routines. She she finds a way. She finds something new. And and kind of watching her has been really amazing to learn from her, you know, even though she's six years old, but just how she's dealt with it. And there's some days where I actually, you know, try to take lessons when when I'm struggling. I'm like, did did we make the right decision? I, I look at her and she's so happy. And then I'm like, yeah, we did. This this has been great. And so again, that lesson is really to make sure that, you know, it's always better to initiate change before change is thrust upon you and especially in a negative way, right? Find those opportunities. And so the second thing that I want to share with you is that, you know, sometimes, um, and I wrote this down, sometimes advice is given not always best for you, but what makes others feel most comfortable. And so I'm going to say that again. Sometimes advice is given not on what is best for you, but what makes others feel most comfortable. So uh, I, I will tell you that when I shared with um, some people I was moving, uh, there's like a, why would you move? And uh, why would you move to Florida? Right? Why would you, you know, why would you go there? And I actually remember having a conversation with someone who was uh, in Orlando. And before I moved, and it was interesting, because I said, Oh, that's super cool. Like, I'm literally moving there this week. And he said to me, <laughs> Why are you moving to Orlando? Like, instead of like, that's weird. I'm like, I'm I'm moving to the place you're vacationing. Like, and he's like, that's a pretty good point. And so it was kind of an interesting thing, right? And and sometimes, you know, like you, you get this advice, and the advice that's given to you is not based on what's best for you, but what is most comfortable for other people. Some people aren't comfortable with change. Some people are happy where they're at, or maybe even, you know, maybe not happy, but just they're there and they don't necessarily even consider that. And so sometimes when they give you that advice, it's not because they're really trying to cheer you on and work you through things and help you out. There's a feeling like you're leaving me, right? Like it's kind of like you're leaving behind. And I kind of like picked that up in some of the conversations, um, just in some of the reactions, because there wasn't like questions asked or anything like that. It was just like a dismissive thing right away. And I thought that was um, kind of interesting. And I, I remember I, I heard something about this like a long time ago. I'm like, no, that's not a thing. But when you get advice sometimes, when you want to like jump in and try something new or maybe start a new endeavor, or, you know, pursue that job that you dreamed of, sometimes the people that care most about you um, or at least say they do, they sometimes hold you back. And it's not because they don't love you. It's not that they don't care for you. It's sometimes there's a feeling that you're leaving them behind or something like that. And so that's where they struggle is that, well, if you embrace this change and it works out, what does that seem like to me? And I think that, you know, and I, I'm, some people and I'm like, like I'm saying this, but maybe you need to ask why you don't like I'm saying it. I think that's that's something I you got to think about. If, if it's like, no, people aren't like that. Maybe, and, and I can say this le legitimately. I, I can tell you this. I know this for a fact because I've done the same thing. I've sometimes, you know, you know, especially when I was a lot younger than I am now, like, why would you do that? And it was because it was something I was scared of. It was something that I didn't see myself doing. It wasn't what was best. And I actually remember uh, and I was, when I was writing these, I, I try, try to kind of think about some of this stuff, like what I'm going to say, what's the story about this? Um, I, I think when we give advice, sometimes the, way, the best way to give advice is just ask a bunch of questions and just listen and try to help people work things out. And I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about uh, a person I've talked about a million times. Her name's Kelly Wilkins. Um, she was my deputy superintendent. She was my principal, totally changed my career, totally changed my life best leader I've ever had, hands down, not even close. And I remember uh, I was really struggling. I, I went through a, a bad breakup. And I remember her 
not really making comments, not really giving me advice, but she just asked me a lot of questions. And she'd ask me questions and I keep and I would like answer them. I'd kind of go through them and she'd really make me think about the situation. And I remember that I was talking about this situation and kind of like how bad it was. And like I was hurt because, you know, I got dumped and, you know, that was like embarrassing and all this other thing. And I remember having this conversation. And I was, it was like weird because I felt this out of body experience as I was talking to her that all of a sudden I was listening to myself tell the story. And I was thinking, why are you so upset? That's weird. Like everything you're saying is not really good. This is a, almost a blessing to, to um, you know, be out of this relationship. This is probably something that would could have got, you know, that might not have made you happy long term. And it was like some weird Jedi mind trick that happened in that situation. But Kelly knows what she's doing because she wants you to be able to work your way through it. So you figure out what works best for you. What works best for me? You know, some people might be listening to this say like, hey, I would never move. I would, you know, I would, why, you know, especially if you live in Canada, you're like I would never move here and that's okay. But that's you. And that's a thing, right? And that's what we have to start realizing is that sometimes we give advice based on what we want, based on our experiences, not based on what we know about the other person, what would help them the most. And so Kelly had a great way of kind of figuring that out. And I was thinking about this, that um, when, when uh, that advice, like when I, I was like, do I, did I ever do this? Did I ever help people like this? And I remember this is such a simple thing. When I was a administrator, I, I used to love dealing with student discipline. I, I thought I was really good with it. It was probably one of my strengths um, as an administrator. And I don't know, like student discipline, I don't know if people call it that anymore or whatever, you know, but I know everyone knows what I'm talking about. And when I was a kid, you know, you did something wrong. You got yelled at by the principal. They like, you know, like you're just, it would be horrible. And um, yeah, and a lot, and you know, that happened to me quite a bit. And then you just kind of tune it out. It doesn't really help you. And you tend to, as an adult, tune that out as well. And when I was an administrator, I had this strategy. And all I do is ask two questions, right? Kid would be sent to the office and I would just say this, hey, why are you here? And sometimes I knew exactly why they were here. And sometimes I had no clue. And the beauty about asking that question is <laughs> that the kids sometimes don't know what you know. So they sometimes just give information like, oh my God, I know that happened. And it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, kind of where that where they go. And so like kids would like tell you the stuff, what was going on. And and I wouldn't move until they told me I was here. I wouldn't say like, oh, I heard you did this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why are you here? Right. And they would, you know, a lot of times it sometimes it took a minute, sometimes it took hours, but I would get that information. And then what I would actually do is once they said that, I said, okay, now that I know what you did, what would you do if you were me? And sometimes the kids would say stuff like, you know, like I swore, so you should expel me from school. I should never be allowed. I'm like, oh, that's, that's a little rough. That's a little tough on yourself, right? They go way overboard. Like the kids were way harder than I would ever been on them in so many of these cases, right? And, you know, a lot of times the kids would work out like, you know, this should be my consequence. This should be the thing that happens here. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted the kid to learn to, you know, to be honest with what the situation was, but take accountability and find a remedy themselves. Because it wasn't just about that moment. It was about what they do in the future. And so the same thing that, um, you know, Kelly did to me, I used to do as students, but sometimes as adults, you know, we, we often give our best advice away to others and don't take it ourselves. And so I, I thought about that. So, we, you know, when, when that advice is given, if you're the one giving advice, try to ask questions, you know, try to understand the perspective and let people work their way through it. Don't necessarily just take your experience and just, you know, you can share your experience for sure, especially if it's asked for. I think there's a different thing because a lot of times um, I wasn't asking for permission or what people thought. They just told me whether I wanted to hear it or not. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, actually a lot of times it wasn't helpful because it's like, oh, that's that's you, right? That's, you know, you don't really understand my situation. So really kind of think about that. If, if people are asking for advice, it's a different thing. But if people want advice, the best way is to help them work through it themselves. Give them those questions, ask them some stuff, let them figure out their own pathway for it because you're not always going to be in that space. And the person I know who's always going to be in the room when I'm struggling is me. And so I got to learn some of those strategies myself. And so the third thing I'm going to share 
and it's kind of based on this um, this advice is this idea of um, addition by subtraction. And I just wrote about this in my email uh, that I just shared out. This it's actually I wrote my email. It's December first. It's going. I wrote it went uh, November thirtieth. It's going on the third. But you know, I know I wrote it, but no one's read it as a time of posting this. And the the addition, the idea of addition by subtraction is sometimes that it's not adding that makes our life better. It's taking some stuff away. And um, when I moved here, you know, I got a new number and I didn't send out the mass like here, hey, everyone, here, everyone, my contact list, here's my new number, right? I was kind of thoughtful about that, you know, I, like, and kind of sharing this stuff. And I know, I know this sounds like pessimistic, but I'm, I'm trying to be vulnerable and honest and authentic. And I think Sometimes, hopefully, this could help someone else with their advice. That this advice, um, the thing that I think about all the time is sometimes when I interact with people, do I feel better or worse after the interaction? And there, there are literally people who speak. You know, they're motivational speakers, and everyone, um, you know, oh, I, I was so revved up, and I'm so excited about talking to that person. You know, some people might say that even about me and the work that I do. But I, I guarantee you, some people after they hear me, like, oh, that makes me, I feel like crap after that. And, and if you, it doesn't matter what the person does. And it's a, a PS, this is really important. This is a no way saying this person's bad. This, some people just don't mesh. Like, here's the thing if you're a teacher, if you're a mesher, some people just don't like you. It's not because you're a bad person. It's not because you're horrible to them. It's just my personalities don't match. It's reality. This is probably the most true thing I'll say. Like, no matter how good you are at a job, somebody hates you. Like, that's a reality. And it's it's not because you're, like I said, it's not because you're bad. Just sometimes personalities don't match. And so I've really kind of focused on, okay, how do I feel after I connect with people? And I want to be in a space where, you know, I'm not saying like all the time. Sometimes you feel crappy talking about people, talking to people that are very close to you that, you know, you die for. But like, if the majority, like you talk to this person, they kind of make you feel like crap. It's probably not a person eating your life. And so I used to think when I was younger, like the more friends, the better. Like when I die, I want a funeral with thousands of people and that'd be great. And I think for me, as I get older, it's not that I want more relationships. I want better relationships. And really the way to foster better relationships is, I don't know, sounds, and maybe it's just for me, is to maybe have fewer. And maybe, and it's to, you know, put more effort, more time into it, but really ask yourself, like the people I want to surround myself, make me want to get better, make me want to grow. And it doesn't mean they're not critical. I think, you know, when you, when people, you know, I've said this a million times, when you know, people got your back they're you're way more willing to be pushed and to share your learning. So I think for me, one of the things I learned and take it for what it is, is that sometimes um, just being cognizant that you you don't necessarily need to spend time with it like you know sometimes um at our work it's always good to be respectful but I don't necessarily need to be around certain people all the time and I, I learned that in my career and i've learned that in life and i always ask that question do i feel better or worse after connecting with that person if it's constantly worse then that's not a good space to be and something i've learned this last year and so the last thing i want to share is this idea of being present and um, kind of learning to sit in silence. So right now I'm in this room and uh, I'm a little embarrassed because my alarm went off, but, and I usually turn my phone off. I don't know why it's been not working the way that you know, it's on do not disturb. Um, but I'm a pretty fidgety person and I can get easily distracted. And what I've really tried to work on this year and it wasn't like intentional. It wasn't like at the beginning of the year, I'm going to do this. It's just like, okay, what are some things I'm like picking up as I go through the year is just kind of just being, just being in a room, just being quiet. You know, when I write stuff, sometimes I put headphones on, but I put no music on. It's like, I want noise cancellation. Um, when I'm doing this podcast, I'm like so immersed in talking to this camera, just like I'm talking to a friend of mine. I feel that makes for a better podcast and there's going to be ums and ands and blah, blah, blah and all that stuff. And I get that. Right. And this is never meant to be perfect. This is meant to be authentic and 
vulnerable and sometimes i say things and i'm like after i'm like oh, should i have said that and i'm like well that's how you feel so yeah that's you know kind of be thoughtful and i'm always cognizant that i'm talking to you know people that will interpret this stuff in different ways and that's kind of the hope is that everyone takes something different out of this um through that but the way you do that is by being present if you are doing like 84 things while you're listening to this podcast of course you're not going to get much out of it because it's kind of a um, this could be a distraction or you're distracted by something else. And so um, I mentioned how much I love going to basketball. Typically, I would go to a game and I would, you know, kind of be on my phone and not pay attention to the game. And I started like, why am I even going if I'm just going to be on my phone the whole time? So I'm just putting my phone away. And it's like a once in a while I'll check in with, you know, but I don't really spend my time. And I just I'm feeling in a different way. And I've put this emphasis on reading every single day and just not and and not on my device because even i would read on kindle and i get notification this and it would distract me and i'd go into this thing and so just having a book where nothing could bother me right and just being in places of quiet when i get up in the morning i spend time and i just visualize how i want my day to go and what i'm grateful for and I'll tell you, that has made such a significant difference in my everyday. And sometimes um, the day doesn't go the way I wanted, but more often than not, it does. And I think just kind of being comfortable being with yourself actually, weirdly enough, makes you better with others, that you learn to be more present when they're around. If you learn to be more present with yourself, you learn to be more present around the people you care about and just kind of be in that space and that to me um has really helped and one of the things i noticed you know as i spend reading these books um and just kind of being there my mental health i feel has just improved dramatically uh and, and maybe it's just because i'm learning to be more accepting of of myself and being you know with my own thoughts and kind of working through them and maybe it's just I'm reading. I don't know. It's just it's been it's just made me feel better. So whatever you're doing, just be in that space, you know, whether it's mentally, physically, all of the above, just be in that space. And I'll tell you, you get so much more out of it. Um, and and really kind of thinking about how that's made such a difference for me. So these are just the four things that I, you know, really learned this year. And uh, I wanted to take some time to share it with you. And I hope that somewhere along the way, you, you pick something up, maybe something challenge you. And I think always when something challenges us, you got to ask, why does it challenge us? Sometimes things challenge us because it's right. And I, I don't mean I'm right, but it's like, mm, I kind of feel uncomfortable because maybe that's true. And I've had a lot of those moments, you know, um, kind of thinking about um, those experiences and things like that. So. All I know is the, the more I learn, the I never realize that the less I know, but I'm so grateful that you are still listening to this podcast. You know, it's just about 30 minutes long. That you're spending this time connecting with me. And uh, I'm grateful for people um, listening and taking the opportunity to connect with me. And I hope truly that, um, you find peace and then as you go into the holidays you get exactly what you need during that time and the re I, I don't say rest there's a reason i don't say rest so you know especially tons of educators are listening to this and you know it's like have a restful holiday it's like nah some people just need to go out and do their thing and you know have a crazy time whatever the reason why i say i hope you get what you you need is because i don't know you and this is kind of going back to some of my other advice is you know find what gives you life what gives you energy what makes you better and that's something i really tried to um learn myself so all my best to you uh i hope you enjoyed this podcast i hope you pick something up again i'd love for you to share one big takeaway from your year what have you learned and uh i look forward to seeing you in 2023 thanks for all you do have a wonderful day take care